The second major stop on our four-week big western road trip was the Little Belt Mountains for Montana Fiddle Camp. Just super impressed with what the Forest Service did with this little patch of ground next to Belt Creek. But yeah, anyway, so two years ago I started kind of really improving our overlanding gear. We had bought the fridge, a few other items, and we camped about six miles from here, but in a developed camp at Fiddle Camp. This time Kathy's going to stay there in a ground tent uh, and just eat and, you know, use the flush toilets and the showers and everything in the dormitory and eat meals in the mess hall there. And I'm going to camp here for the week and do more exploring of the Little Belt Mountains, just in a very beautiful spot that is very secluded and a not very touristy part of Montana. So, wow, yeah, really excited. Uh, we'll see how we'll see how the week goes. Okay, so just a quick uh, check in here with the map. So that didn't quite, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, but that's fine. Um, there's Memorial Falls, there's the Aspen Campground, and that's where I'm staying right here behind the helo pad right along Belt Creek. And I saw this and I thought, oh, that's great. Now it does seem to show a motorcycle there, but this is the coloring for uh, all use trails. I find what I was saying a second ago inside the truck. There's the trailhead for trail 734, Pioneer Ridge trail number 734, a couple other trails branch off of it. And that's the sign. Okay there, so December to whatever, uh, I guess it's open to motorcycles, September to November it's closed. Interesting. And year long there's no ATVs. All right, now I see it closer. That makes more sense. I'm like, wait, you can or can't? Well, certain times a year. And here I am in June. So December to August, this is open to motorcycles, but never open to Jeeps or quads. Last time I came out here, I did study the motor vehicle use map fairly extensively and it didn't do me a whole lot more good. Really always the best, and there's a ranger station near. Today's Sunday, tomorrow I might just go check in and get the, usually they have the best suggestions anyway, depending on what you wanna do. All right, so what do I do if I'm gonna go camp in, this is not grizzly country by the way, this is more black bear country, but I am hiking, I'm by myself. So, on my belt, Garmin inReach, also synced to my phone, both charged. On the phone, I run Gaia GPS with decent battery on my phone so I can get back. I carry with me, and I'll open the door here on these kind of trails. I carry with me a Y harness with canteens, a walking stick, and bear spray. So the bear spray is honestly probably overkill from what the park rangers told me last time because they said it's black bears only around here and they tend to run from you. But I don't believe in taking chances. So got a hat i got my hiking boots i got water there in the canteens should be a fun and short not very challenging hike but i just wanted to show i don't take chances this is bear country so why fool around all right well right off the bat the trail is steep so i didn't look closely at the topo lines i was kind of too eager to get started but in general just looking around you with the lay of the land. These are kind of fingers and draws, or more precisely mountains and valleys. 
So if I'm going to head this direction, the only way is up, either up straight or up via switchback, but up. Yeah, kind of as I'd hoped. A couple more switchbacks, and the view is even more spectacular. That's a nice, beautiful vista. And unfortunately, you know, it sounds silly to say, but this beauty is typical of this area and the Little Belt Mountains. I'm really not far from civilization at all. You can hear the roar of the cars. I can even see the dirt road and I can see the roof of a building right through those trees, but still it's just gorgeous. And this is one of the other parts of a hike you really come to appreciate. Yes, it is very steep. But as soon as I step past these trees, just a nice, slow-moving push of cool air. Beautiful birds here, probably protecting their nest. Some kind of little finch. Makes a trip, trip, trip. Another beautiful view. Unfortunately, this time I did not get the blast of cool air. Yeah, my squirrel does not like me here. And again, I don't know if you can pick it up. I know you can hear him trip, trip, trip a little bit. Well, here once again, I'm just going to pause to admire that beautiful view. Oh, well, that's, a, that's really something. I don't know if it'll come out in a GoPro, but I can see my campsite. See the blue tarp, I can see the beige of the tent, and I can see the red outhouse shelter. Yeah, I'm glad I continued. This is, this is kind of nice. This is, uh, a little hard to tell from the current angle I'm providing with the GoPro, but with your normal field of vision, you could see kind of the vista opening up. As the topo map indicated, this is the sort of rounded top of this ridge. So like I say, I'm on the limit of where the topo lines are close together. I go around here, as you can see, the topo lines will be farther and farther apart as the slope softens. And I think this approach is worth filming, just the GoPro doesn't give you the full proper visual, but it's like I could see some bright sun from a ways back, and then all of a sudden there's just a spot where the trail opens up. To me, those are some of the most beautiful parts of a hike like this. Is Just how the terrain sometimes surprises you with a boulder field, or in this case, it just kind of opens up. And again, it's a fairly gradual elevation change. And the topo lines on the Gaia map indicate sort of what they did here. They went to the top of the steep ridge and that's where they established the trail. So it's always fairly steep to my right, but increasingly flat to my left. And you can kind of see what I assume is an aspen. And the fir trees kind of open up and you see this pretty little valley here. I don't know if there's normally water in that ravine. This appears to be where the two ridge lines meet. And this is where I think this trail just continues on down the next ridge without ever really quite going up to the peak of any ridge. Now this is pretty, you can still see, I don't know if that's snow melt or just spring water from the recent rain. And a little path here, it's full of water. As this area drains. So again, just remarkably beautiful. And that's about it. That's kind of what was indicated in Gaia. I couldn't tell from looking at Gaia. 
if I would be able to get to the very top, staying on the trail, and it would indicate no. You see there, the trail just kind of keeps skirting what I would call the windward edge of the ridge line there. And down by my feet, you can see how the spring water just percolates out of the ground, runs down the mountainside. And this is that little opening that you could just see from the distance. And you can't always tell what's ahead of you, but this looked pretty spectacular, and so it is. Like a hawk just flew over there. It's going to have to point down to have any chance of being able to show the trail, but I can see it continuing on there down the ridge. I'll look at Guy one more time, but I'm pretty sure. Just going to drink some water and head back down. Uh, yeah, once again, master the GoPro. I just narrated my nice approach up to the uh, car and uh, realized it wasn't recording. I do that a lot. But um, I did take a picture of the spot where the old 734 trail on Gaia, the dash white line, and my path split. So again, I just followed the clearly marked trail. A wonderful hike, uh, not too terribly challenging. A lot of elevation change, but incredible scenery. Now I'm going to try and do is zoom in to the area where I think I was looking down onto the campsite. I did not have this camera with me, but I took pictures with the GoPro and with the cell phone. It's actually kind of a cool vista. Now I can't quite tell from this video mode if it is correctly identifying that bright green spot on the mountainside, but I'm pretty sure that's where I was standing when I looked down. So I thought that was pretty cool. Useville Road is up toward Monarch, and there's a lot of nice dispersed camping sites there. Jefferson Creek uh, similarly has a lot of nice dispersed camping sites. Now these are much more RV friendly to where people with a decent vehicle can get a pretty good sized camper into those locations. And here's an example to some folks with a tent camp. So that's site 267 C. And uh, just a beautiful spot along what I believe is Jefferson Creek. I'm a little embarrassed to note as I went through the map, I didn't realize I already explored this. So I did explore this last time I was here. So I have to reconsider the map. Fortunately, I marked 10 locations. So I marked to take it up through the main road here. And then I'll just look on Gaia where I went from the main road last time. It looks like I may have gone north but there's multiple more treks afterwards so I'll consult Gaia I may I had to go this way anyway I may continue on uh, all the way around to the south and then north again so it'll be interesting interesting to see how much of this I've already covered from last time nice to use Gaia where it shows you your historical tracks so again just kind of typical of the beauty of the area the confluence of two different creeks there. It's just beautiful. And this is just primitive campsite 267i. I saw the sign. I couldn't tell if it was a offshoot road, not on the map, 2671, or if it was just one of the designated primitive campsites. But you can see this is just letter I along Forest Service Road 267. And I just had to stop because I'm like, wow, this is just a typical dispersed campsite. Just an example of what an incredibly beautiful place this is. Decisions, decisions. I can see on Gaia where I went last time. I'm at this intersection right now and you can look out there you can see 
trail straight ahead 267N, 3328 to my right, and I believe this is also 3328 to my left, uh, and it kind of goes through here. Now, in the Gaia track, you can see where I stopped and turned around. According to the map, this, because, this is seasonal, but there's another road, another part of 3328 that continues. Now, I'm assuming there's a reason I stopped where I did, so I'm not going to bother re-exploring that. I think what I'm going to do now is continue on to the south, where I did go quite a ways. And in my research last night, I decided I wanted not to come back down here to 89, but then to circle back, which I think is right here. 3356, I'm not sure what that is there. Yeah, 3356 marked on the other map, and then continue that up. So it's gonna, still going to be a little while till I get to something I haven't driven yet, but that last night looked like all the branches that I want to pursue next. So we'll see how it goes. So this is, I think, 748. I don't know if they properly labeled it here. No, I just thought that was funny that it's ATV, dirt bike, or hiking, and less than 50 inches, and someone put a... I mean, I guess you can see some ATVs fit between that rock and that concrete post, but certainly a side-by-side -side wouldn't. So they say 50 inches. Well, maybe. I guess that could be 50 inches. In any event, they're pretty serious about it. But that's one thing I wanted to do differently this time is not uh, feel so obligated to... Uh, just drive and find dispersed camping sites. I found plenty this visit to the Little Belt Mountains. I want to do some hiking, take some pictures, and just kind of enjoy nature a little bit. Definitely a good call to have uh, turned around and come back. I didn't get too much into the mud, but you know, when you're driving, you can feel. And uh, I tried to straddle a couple of those ruts, and there was no way slid right in them. That's very soupy, so I don't need to be uh, pulling out winch line out here by myself and possibly getting myself into a sticky situation. 
and I can think about a thousand awesome uses for a piece of land like that. How about that, huh? I mean, that is just phenomenal. I don't know how many acres of clearing this is. You're right on top of the mountain. That is absolutely fantastic. I think just for someone who camps a lot in the UP, and there's all kinds of water in the ground, it's cool at night, warm in the day, I'd be swarmed with the mosquitoes right now in the upper peninsula of Michigan, but for whatever reason right now here in the Little Belt Mountains, I did spray off once or twice, but I've barely seen any mosquitoes out here. What a beautiful, beautiful prairie. Well, I'm afraid the mosquitoes took that as a challenge. Uh, I just had to roll up all my windows. I went out one last time to take a picture in the heat of the truck. Uh, finally did get swarmed with mosquitoes. Nothing like what I experienced in the UP, but yes, there are mosquitoes up here in the marshy areas of the Little Belt Mountains. And we're back. Gaia recovered. So that's kind of what I wanted to see. Yes, this is where I wanted to turn off the other route. I could either have gone down here. I think there's another road down here, but I'm not sure there is. This is definitely the way I want to backtrack now. Um, if, it, uh, if everything works out, and I can get to the first point of interest that I had that I hadn't already driven uh, two years ago. This map, 251 would be a right turn and 3300 would be a left. And the two maps do seem to match each other pretty well. So I'm not super sure what to make of that. I think I'll just explore all of them. Not in a huge hurry here anyway. But this is a gorgeous spot. I have to get out and take some pictures with the other camera. Just a absolutely spectacular view from here. Go to sleep, you little babe. 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 Your mom's gone away and your dad's gone to stay. Do nobody but Go to sleep, you little bed. 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 Everybody's gone in the car, and the car didn't leave nobody but the baby. Your sweet little baby. Your sweet little baby. Your sweet little baby. Your sweet little honey in the rock. And the sugar don't stop Don't bring a bottle to the baby Don't you wait, pretty babe 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 She's all gone with the red shoes all gone Need another love, babe Go to sleep, you little babe. 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 You and me and the devil makes sleep. Don't need no other love, babe. Go to sleep, you little 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 babe. Come and lay your bones on the alabaster stones and be my ever-loving baby. For whatever reason, the wind and such, the conditions are perfect for this drift. Now, you never ever want to leave a marked trail. Here you can see someone's already established the bypass, so I won't have to turn and go all the way around. There was some really deep uh, mud ruts back there that had a bypass as well. But, uh, Again, so second week of June, as I was warned last time I was here, you can start to see right up on the side of the mountain there, you can also see, uh, I'll try to zoom in better, you can see quite a bit of snow there. Actually, you can look right across the valley and see the little white stripes too. So here and there, the snow has not melted. All right, I'm gonna keep this brief because this is the second time in two trips to the Little Belt Mountains. I have had to do my least favorite thing. So this route was getting more and more interesting. There's where it continues over there. I'm at about 8,500 feet. And the people had gone before me, so I was gonna be fine. Here is where I had to back up, turn around, and face down the mountain. I'm gonna keep this brief because I'm running out of time and fuel. But 
right up here. I had to back down all of this, getting out of the truck about every three feet. Because you not only have to watch your back end, you have to watch your front wheel placement. Would never have planned on doing this by myself. And I came down here, which means I backed all the way up this with very little clearance to the edge of the shelf road. I backed up this entire thing because I'm cruising along, cruising along, following someone else's tracks, thinking, yeah, obviously I can get to the next main road, which is not that far from here. Up the mountain. Up the mountain. Boy, it's beautiful, but it's starting to, starting to give me the willies. And yes, I back down all of this. Up and around this bend. And isn't that beautiful? No way you're getting through that. And there's no bypass here. There is no way. You're getting down that mountain. Someone has a track down there somewhere that they've been using to get around here. Now, is this the only spot? Looking at that snow, I doubt it. So, really wasn't looking to take on a big challenge by myself in a remote area. Sometimes you get surprised. And this was a boiling the frog situation. The trail kept getting a little, little more technical, a little more technical, and it just drew me in to a dead end on a shelf road. My least favorite thing is trying to back down a doggone shelf road. Oh goodness. Oh, by the grace of God, everything's fine. And I just kept stopping, breathe, deep breathing. Remind myself, don't be foolish. Take your time. I tried to turn around immediately, but there was no way. Dimensions of the truck, narrowness of the shelf road. Now how people deal with this over the course of the year when vehicles meet, no idea. One of them has got to back up a long way on the shelf road to allow the other to clear. The good news is, it's the, just here at the end, that it's the shelf road. I'll relatively quickly be back on the forest road. Disappointing thing is there's just no... I've got over a quarter tank, but there's no fast way to get out of here. So that's kind of a bummer. Maybe I'll gas up in Nyhurt, maybe just use my gas that's back at the back at the camp. Very glad I had an energy bar in the truck too. Because I would not have wanted to try to do this hangry and shaky and everything. It was like 3.30, 4 o'clock. Didn't really intend to stick out here this long today. And a little bit, mountains are beautiful. But I'm only just learning in early June which of these roads you can and cannot complete in a typical spring. I really don't have time to take the camera out. Just another absolutely, ridiculously magnificent vista. Absolutely crazy how beautiful it is out here. All right, well, that's me and my usual efficiency. I just narrated my return to camp just in time to realize it wasn't recording. Uh, and apparently when you push the power button while it's recording, it adds a highlight. Never knew that. All right, so a lesson I should have learned once before. This last time I was in Little Belt Mountains, I drove down, I think it was Gold Rush Road or Gold Dust Road, and kind of like boiling the frog, the trail got a little sketchier, a little sketchier, but I pressed on, and I found myself having to back out of a shelf road and there again, fortunately, all right, I have to go too far before I could back up the mountainside, stare straight down the mountain, turn around and come out. In this case, I had to back up almost 300 feet of rocky cliff over boulders. It was pretty exciting. Uh, and then I was able to turn around and, uh, and drive back. I almost took like two more chances thinking, ah, the map would show this is a shortcut. And I'm like, yeah, no. And I uh, just got back to Highway 89 and back to camp. So I'm hungry. I'm going to try to see if I can still get some uh, laundry done before the 7 p.m. concert at Montana Fiddle Camp. Couldn't be happy with the Hummer. It behaved fantastically. No issues. 
uh, challenged it a few times out there where I, and again, I don't fool around. If I see I'm in the middle of nowhere all by myself, the extraction would be thousands of dollars. I lock front and rear, drop four low, and then go through it. I'm not, I'm not taking chances. Uh, although I will say I wasn't expecting to do off-roading today. I thought I'd just explore some easy forest service roads. I didn't even put the receiver winch on the front. But anyway, it all ended well. There is a bit too much content of the explorations of the Little Belt Mountains, not to mention the beautiful bluegrass concert every evening for me to cram into one video. So I'll put the remainder of this content into a second video.